Hello, this is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm David Goodwin, and over there is John Lewandowski. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. How are you doing, John? Doing good. I'm doing good myself. Uh, had a somewhat solid day. Today was a good day. I found out uh, Little Caesars brought back the pretzel pizza. <laughs> um, it's solid. Um, today the bread still got the penguins. Um, I, I'm just gonna turn it over to Jot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Shots on goal in the first period, Pittsburgh outshot Nashville 16 to 12. In the second period, Pittsburgh outshot Nashville 15 to 5. In the third period, Pittsburgh outshot Nashville 14 to 11. And in total, Pittsburgh outshot Nashville 45 to 28. In the faceoff circle, the Penguins are better at 53% to the Predators 47%. On the power play, the Predators went 0 for 3, while the Penguins went 1 for 4. Predators had 8 penalty minutes, the Penguins 6. Hits, the Penguins had 41, the Predators 36. Blocks, the Predators 19, the Penguins 15. Giveaways, the Penguins had 12, the Predators 5. Scoring in the first is nothing. Scoring in the second at the 14-15 mark was Jason Zucker, the former Minnesota Wild. He scored his 26th with an assist from Brian Dumoulin, his 19th. And one of my favorite players in the league, Giddy Malkin, with his 53rd assist of the season. Then in the third at the 13-03 mark on the power play, Jake Kensel scores his 34th with an assist from Brad Kell, his 29th, and Latang, his 26th. In net for the two teams, in net for Pittsburgh, getting the shutout was Tristan Jari, stopping 28 to 28. In net for the Preds, Juice. Juice stopped 43 of 45 with a .956 save percentage. He stopped 9 of 10 on the power play and 30 of 31 on the even strength, including all four he faced shorthanded, which should not happen all that often. Right. Um, statistics I wanted to point out here. The Preds may have only had five giveaways, but Pittsburgh had, I think it was like 16 takeaways. Right. And the Preds only had like four. You give the puck away, but you get it back. Right. That's where that comes in handy. All right. Referees were Justin St. Pierre and Mitch Dunning. Linesmen were Mark Suchik and Killian McNamara. Head coach for Nashville is John Hines. Head coach for Pittsburgh is Mike Sullivan. Scratches for Nashville, Jake Livingstone. Alexander Carrier, Robin Yossi, Yusuf Parson, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan Ellis, Ryan Johansson, <laughs> <laughs> and Matthew Shaver. Um, scratches for Pittsburgh were Alex Nylander and Jan Ruta, former Blackhawk. So was Nylander, both of them former Blackhawks. <gasps> Over under on this is this is not how you want to play. Right. Especially if you're trying to make the playoffs. Um, this is another two points off the board that you could have got. Um, it looked like the guys looked visibly frustrated. Yeah. And I I don't know. If they're visibly frustrated, I wonder if they're not being prepared the way they should. Yeah. Like, not from the player standpoint, but the coaching standpoint. It always comes back to that. If the players don't play well, it falls on the coach. These guys got no offensive pressure. The power play looked horrible. 
They played solid defense, but that only gets you so far. I mean, what are you supposed to do? Um, next up for us is Grand Rapids. The ads versus Grand Rapids. We can clinch tomorrow with an overtime visit or a W to get one point. Last I saw floating around the league is that Winnipeg was losing, but I don't know. Or sorry, not Winnipeg, Manitoba. Manitoba is currently five minutes left in the third, and they are down by Abbotsford by one goal. Well, why would that matter to the Admirals as they're behind? Well, it does matter because with this, the Admirals would have two games in hand on them. To If we don't get the first place seed, we play them. So we want the home ice on that. Right. So that's where if they lose and we can pick up those two points tomorrow and pick up a couple wins this weekend, who knows? But as I've I've said all year, this game this team finds ways. Um uh as many know, uh Todd Burgess, uh aside from Norfolk to Milwaukee by the Admirals. He's under an AHL contract. Um, and then Livingstone is going to be in the NHL, apparently. Um, they're not planning on sending a beer. Okay. So we'll see what happens. But um, he put pretty solid numbers up there at uh, Minnesota State Mankato. So. <laughs> Sorry. And. Uh, awesome. Minnesota State Mankato's head coach just got signed to a new deal. He is now the head coach of the Wisconsin Badgers. Men's team. Oh. Anything you would like to add, John? No. Okay. Hello. Well, that's all we got right, for you need... today. I'm well, sorry. Yeah, they need to play better than this. They do. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Do I expect them to win every game? No. Do I expect them to play hard every game? Yes. They did yeah. do that today, but it just seems like one of those nights where they were better prepared for Nashville than Nashville being prepared for the Penguins. Right. And You wonder at what point is it not even just the coaching staff, but just juice carrying this team. <laughs> <laughs> just Soros is playing amazing right now. Right now, he's been playing amazing all year. Yeah. The team in front of him is a better question. Goal is as only as good as the team in front of him. That's why I say Soros should be a, a Vesna candidate this year just based on the team he had. Right. So, oh, I got to say, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I am so tired. Me too. But thank you guys for watching. I wish we had more for you. <laughs> this is a short yeah. show. But we, we, we got nothing. Um, We'll, we'll hope to have more tomorrow. So we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching.